Ooh, this is my best video to date. I'm excited today. I'm going to show you how to find deals in the MLS on my website. I'm going to use my prop board and we're going to talk about investments. Thanks for watching. Filmed this video twice and the first time I did, I used permanent marker on here. So I was going to take you through it, but don't be distracted. That's for later. Now I want to show you my website because what we're seeing here is inventory on the bench. That is a good thing if you're buying a home on the bench. So this is my website and to check it out on this view, you click on this funky zigzag thing. It's supposed to look like a paper map. For all you millennials, maps used to be printed on paper. I know it's archaic, but click on the paper map and then you can look uh, at where you want to live. There are some kind of outliers. This one here is kind of below, but technically it's in the MLS area bench. And some of these areas maybe are a little further from downtown. So um, if the location is important to you, location, location, because it might be, if it is important to you, you can search by map and that's helpful. And there's a bunch of other features. So what I do to find a house on the bench is click search listings and click search the bench, nice and easy for you. And it's automatically sorting by new. So these ones are brand new. They just hit the market today. So what does that mean? It's Wednesday. Normally I do these videos on a Tuesday, but I wait until the second business day after the weekend, right? So we just had Memorial Day. And why do I do that? Business gets done on business days. So yesterday was the first business day. So when buyers and sellers are talking and chatting over the weekend, they run things by the lender, they call the bank, they do phone calls on the business day. And it's that second business day, usually Tuesday, that we see more opportunities. So these guys on a Wednesday, they both have open houses scheduled. It wouldn't be crazy to cancel the open house if they got a strong offer. So on a Wednesday, could you give the seller a good enough offer to cancel the open house? I've seen it done. Later in the week, you know, on a Tuesday of a normal week, I would say they probably wouldn't wait till the weekend. These are scheduled open houses, and yet there's opportunity. Notice the price points, $390 on Leta, $430 on Bethel. Now, the other thing you can do to find deals in the MLS, just to kind of help yourself, is click on this filter, and then get rid of active, get rid of active contingency, and now we're looking only at homes that are pending, meaning they've accepted offers, and they're off the market. This one is on Fremont. It's new because it was only on for a week. And the same this one on Skeen. It's still got a new tag because it's been on for less than a week. So you can look at the prices and see um, kind of what's going on at certain price points. But let's just pick a random one here. Now this is, like I said, it's sorted by new. So we'll look at this one on Ashland Drive. And it tells you, if you scroll down, 12 days on the site. And there was not a price reduction. We don't know if that price is the pending price, but at 12 days, I would suspect maybe it is. And you can keep scrolling down. Here's one on Sierra Drive. That's a little bit of filter. Yeah, I do. Okay, that one's calling new for some unknown reason. But my point is, you can look at these pending listings and find out how long our homes stay on the market and how does that or how might that affect your buying habits. Take for example, if your budget was 350 to 450, these are the homes in that price range. Now it's not a mistake that these two homes look a lot alike. This one's on Fremont Street, 430. This one's on Taggart, 375. This one's pending, and they both went live around the same time. So what's the difference? Slight square footage bump on Fremont. This location might be slightly better. Uh, it's a little closer to downtown. It's closer to the Greenbelt. But where's the 55 grand coming from? It's a two-car garage. This has access to a, an alley and has a two-car garage with a decent little amount of storage and, and kind of a modern garage, which on the bench is a little uncommon. I would think that a garage is worth what an appraiser says, usually around 30 grand for a two car, I would think, but 55 is maybe the difference here. Now these houses are literally almost identical. So the only difference is the garage, and then like I said, slight bump in location. So what does that mean for you? That means this one at 375 is looking like a pretty good value. If this is 430, I would think this is closer to 400. It's priced at 375. So seems like a deal to me. It's nice if you like it, I'm not buying it, but if you are, 375 seems like a deal. This one on Palouse, believe it or not, is very similar. Okay, my internet just, oh, that didn't go down. A uh, little different facade, but basically the same house. Similar square footage, it's two beds upstairs with a bath and then a half bath downstairs. Basically the same, very similar location. So this one at 390, 375 still looking like a good deal. Now there's probably some slight nuances with the neighbors or what the view is or the exact area of town. Overall, the one on Taggart is looking like a pretty good deal. Are they going to lower their price? I don't expect to. If they're doing an open house this weekend. I'll be hosting it. Come see me. Hi. Um, they won't be lowering the price. I doubt it. Is it going to last another weekend or two? I don't know. We were at Memorial Day weekend this past weekend. It was kind of rainy. 
hard to say what goes on on the holiday weekends in real estate. Now, that's residential stuff. What about the income producing properties? I'm going to show you this one that just went pending after about 10 days on the market, 11 days in the market. It's pending at 875. Now, if you're an investor, you might use a rule or a metric, and some people use this 1% rule, meaning can you buy something for 1% of what it would rent for, or vice versa? So if it was a $500,000 house, could you rent it for $5,000? That's the 1% rule. So you take the rent and you can extrapolate the purchase price or have some guidance in the purchase price. Now in Boise, what we're seeing actually more commonly is like half a percent. Does that mean investors are settling for half a percent? Well, investors buy for a number of reasons. They've got uh, tax obligations, they're trying to do something with cash or banking on appreciation, who knows? But half a percent is a little more common. So if you could buy something for 500,000, could you then rent it for 2,500? Yeah, maybe, I think maybe you could. Now this one that we are talking about here on Susan Lane, it's sort of a modern-ish, it's like 30 years old apartment, so it's not some funky old thing on the bench. You don't have to worry about too many problems. The rents are around 4,000, so they're about 1,000 bucks a piece. Market is actually 1,300. One of the units is at 1,300. Now you can't just raise the rent, you have to honor the existing lease. So when those leases are up, <clears throat> could you raise the rent to 1,300? Probably. Three units, or four units at 1,300. Let me do the math for you real quick. 1,300 times four times 12 is 62,400. That's the total revenue or the total potential revenue for this investment property. Now, I don't have a pen that can write on this board, and this one was done with permanent ink. But what I did was, <clears throat> at 62,400, if you extrapolate the purchase price, it would be 624, and this is 875. So the 1% rule doesn't apply. Half a percent rule would put a purchase price of 1.2, and it's only 875, so this is like around 0.7%. So if you're following me on the math, this seems like a decent deal, right? 875, you wanna get 87.50 a month in rent. Once you actually get market rent, you're probably gonna get more like 5,200 a month. Half of that would be 48 and change, or 46 or so. So you're doing better than half a percent. You're at 0 0.6, 0 0.7, so I think that's pretty decent. Now, when you're buying an investment property, you've got multiple things to consider. I would think that maintenance is one of them. And this house, these houses, you can tell there's two down and two up, so you share the roof and a little less maintenance because it's modern. You don't have to mess with like old funky stuff with a bunch of trees and funky roof because that's common on the bench. So this was on the market for 11 days. Is it a deal? It doesn't do the 1% rule, but it beats the half a percent rule. So I think it's nice if you like it, and someone sure does. Now, pending in 11 days, 875, maybe they got it for a little less. Maybe they got a deal. This is in the MLS. All this stuff is in the MLS. These are my sites. You can see the stuff that's in the MLS. So there are deals out there if you know when to look, which is today, right? The first business day after the weekend, things are happening. So look for new listings, check out what's pending, seeing what's happening in the market, keep your finger on the pulse, or just stay close to me. Call me if you have questions. I will help you. Thank you for watching.